Now we're going to talk about color-based key effects. Now, uh, I have added this standard color effect, uh, this one, at the top here. So we have uh, a color scheme to go off of to see how a lot of these work. Um, so again, there's the standard key effect color that we had done before. It is a override based. Um, so if we don't have this active, you can see what this looks like before. And then if we activate it, uh, all of a sudden it is active. Um, if you take the alpha out, which means it's kind of like a blend, that means it takes away the blend, um, uh, the override of what this is. And then, of course, you can recolor on top of that. Um, just It's a good example to see how this works once it's on top of something that has color in it. So we can delete uh, we can delete this key and keep make this not active. Uh, the next thing uh, though that we have though that's a key effect a different type of color one. Um, this is a contrast type of thing. Uh, so if you have a, a frame that's pre-created and it has um, kind of some uh, it has a color that you want to bring out, uh, then you can you know bring the contrast up and thicken the colors. Say the colors are a little bit more pastel. Uh, and you want to make them thicker and you want to make them a little bit more pronounced, you can do that, or you can do that in the other way, and you can kind of lighten them and make them a little bit less thick. Uh, the same thing, kind of similar with saturation, except it takes, saturation is based on color and not uh, straight on color by how much it takes away instead of kind of how thick it is. And then lightness is uh, kind of, it's almost like a mini brightness, but it has to do with how color works. If you have interesting um, color designs uh, in a pre-designed frame, you can add this later on and mess with these to try and re-change the colors up to say, oh, that wasn't right, and you don't want to go and edit the uh, frame itself, and uh, you just want to try and get the colors to match what you're trying to do. Uh, you can do that here. Um, and then, of course, works the same way. You can key it out so it changes along a timeline, and you can do that with seconds, beats, whatever. The next one is uh, red level green level and blue level uh, this is so if you wanted to take away uh, if you almost want to do a color balance um, you can force more color onto it or you can take away that color you can do that for red green and blue and you can basically uh, do kind of a color balance a forced color balance from here uh, you can add a red level so it'll everything gets more red in it um, or you can take it away and say, you know, I need a little bit less red in that white or whatnot. You can do that as well. Um, the same works for the green level. You can see how it kind of takes away uh, from the whole thing here. And then again, blue works the same way. And you can do those with those key effects. The next one is replace color. So say, um, oh shoot, you know, you had a frame and you wanted the red. You wanted that to become pink. There we go. Uh, if we disable, you see how the red, which you picked here, uh, will turn pink when we enable it. The same can be done, say, oh, you know, I wanted that green to be pink, or I wanted that blue to be pink. You can replace colors later on and kind of specifically pick out colors that you uh, wanted before if the frame that you were working on isn't perfect. Color noise is an effect that is uh, actually a fun little effect. It's not necessarily has to do with color, um, but what it does do is it kind of replaces certain points inside of your uh, your frame. So if we say we want to have red color noise and we add the, the value up, it'll what it will do is it replaces um, the points inside of your line uh, with that color. So you can create a noisy environment where it kind of replaces um, points randomly with the color that you deem that you'd like. So say it's green, say if you want it to just be, you want to replace with greens, you can do that. Say you want to do it with blues, so you, want, you can send, you can create your color, whatever the noise you want it to be. Uh, if you get really creative, you could create a bunch of whole keys, a bunch of different colors, and then you can kind of rainbow through it if you wanted to. You can do whatever color you'd like. Uh, you can even do it black, so if you wanted to have color noise be black, you could do it that way by having zero, zero, zero. Uh, this is a fun little effect that you can use for kind of a staticky noise. Um, I'd love to use it, use it in timeline uh, quite a few times. It's a great effect to have and a fun little effect that has, it's not necessarily direct to uh, changing color, but it has a lot to do with the, uh, you can kind of create noise inside of your effect, which creates a really cool effect um, for
for different sounds that you might have to do. The next type of effects we have in key effects are we're going to talk about our modulators and waves and whatnot, and they can be found uh, right here. Uh, so before, like with oscillation effects, well, we had kind of waves creators, and we had here we had the inward waves uh, right here. We have them in key effects, so we don't. It's not just a setup thing; it's a key effect, so you can change it over time. Um, but the the attributes are the same as they are in the other areas. So with modulator. Let's say we can, oh, that's fun. Uh, so let's say we have four waves. And let's bring that speed down. Default, uh, it with these ones, it randomizes the default. Uh, so it's kind of fun to play with. So the way that this uh, works is kind of creates an inward type of wave form. And you can create, you can change the amplitude of how much it actually modifies it. So we have a small circle. It'll start to bring that in and force the waves inward. And then it'll create a star pattern um, type of thing, a flowerish type pattern, depending on how much amplitude you give it. Now, if your size is bigger, then it has it's still pushing the waves inward more, but they don't intersect until later on. So that's an interesting thing to note. So when you change the size of um, the actual shape, it changes the way that it does the waves. And then, of course, you can say, oh, I want it to be, you know, let's say it's three waves. You can do three waves, four, five. A fun thing to do is if you start it, let's say, we'll key at the beginning of 5, and then the key at the end of 5, and then in the 50% we make it 0. When it does the actual animation, it'll cut, draw in that area and then draw that out. Let's just make that for like 4 seconds. So you can see how it draws it in and then draws it back out. So that's a fun thing you can do. Um, and it's kind of an inward type of wave. The X oscillator uh, has to do with waves on the X axis. Uh, back and forth in the x axis. So if you have a um, if we have a vertical line, and we just make this bigger so we can see it, then we have we all of a sudden have waves on that axis. It's very simple. Works the same way, um, and you could even do let's say this, that, and if we bring this here, we can bring that down. So it kind of brings it in and out. That's a quick little example of how you can key this out um, and change the amplitude uh, on in in a space of time. Unlike when you do it in vertical waves or you do it in an oscillation effect. Um, so that's and the same thing as the Y oscillator. If you have a horizontal line, you can have uh, waves on the Y on the Y axis, up and down on the Y axis. Uh, amplitude waves, again, key it out however you like. And then uh, you have the Z oscillator. So if you're working with depth, uh, you can do uh, work, hit work with them on the depth. Now if you're looking at a front on, nothing looks like it's any changing, but if you're working in depth, you can do that layer as well.